Hello and welcome to the ABC Networking channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this video I will show you how to configure private VLANs on Aruba OS switch devices and on top of that show you how to get RADIUS authentication to work with VLAN assignment. Let me start with a short introduction on private VLANs. Private VLANs partition an existing VLAN into multiple sets of ports for traffic isolation. The partitioned VLAN is referred to as the primary VLAN and the subdomains separated from the primary VLAN are referred to as secondary VLANs. Secondary VLANs are considered regular VLANs and they are identified by using a unique VLAN ID and the primary VLAN carries the secondary VLANs. There are two types of secondary VLANs. There are community VLANs and isolated VLANs. If a secondary VLAN is configured as a community VLAN, the devices within that secondary VLAN can still communicate with each other. However, this is not really what I would like to achieve. In order to increase the security level, it would be great if the devices in the secondary VLAN are isolated from each other and can only communicate with the promiscuous port. In order to allow communication between the secondary VLANs and a common port, you have to make that port a member of the primary VLAN. This port will then automatically become the promiscuous port for all secondary VLANs. In other words, all devices that operate in the secondary VLANs can communicate with the hosts that are in the primary VLAN. Does it dazzle you already? No worries, let me guide you through the private VLAN configuration first and let me explain during the configuration. First, let me show you the setup for the private VLANs. We have, uh, we have an access switch here, and on this access switch we have two access devices connected, and we have an uplink, port 2.1, to another device which is going to be the promiscuous port. We will be configuring an isolated secondary VLAN, so this means that the both devices at the bottom will not be able to communicate with each other, however they can still reach the promiscuous port. Uh, let's start with um, by going through the setup of the access switches. They are already configured for IP. Everything is on VLAN 1, all the switches and let me show you the running configs and then let me try and ping from one of the access devices to all other devices. Here you can see the configuration of the switches. So the devices, the access devices are all switches. Uh, you can see that all the switches are in VLAN 1, configured an IP address on VLAN 1. And let me just show you whether the devices are reachable. So it's three is reachable and I can reach the other access switch as well from the promiscuous device and let me ping between the access devices as well and you can see that that's all working. The first step in the private VLAN configuration is the creation of the primary VLAN on the access switch. Now this is the access switch, let me show you the running configuration. You can see there's not much on there, just default VLAN 1 with an IP address. Now before we start configuring the private VLAN, let me first run a repetitive ping from one access switch to the promiscuous device. And let me run a ping between the access devices. And this should all be working. Now for the configuration. So let's start configuring the primary VLAN. So go to VLAN 110 and we set this as the private, uh, the primary VLAN. 
And now we're adding a secondary VLAN which will be an isolated VLAN. So this means that all devices that sit in that VLAN cannot communicate with each other. So private VLAN isolated 120. You can see that there's still nothing happening because all the access devices are not a member of VLAN 120. So let's do that. Let's go to VLAN 120 and add the access port as untagged member of VLAN 120. So untagged 2 slash 2 and 2 slash 3. And now you can see that all the communications stop. The communication between the access devices has stopped because we have configured the secondary VLAN as isolated VLAN. And the communication with the promiscuous port has stopped because the promiscuous port is not a member of the primary VLAN. It's still a member of VLAN 1. Now let's change that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the promiscuous port as an untagged member of VLAN 110. Let's go back to VLAN 110 and add the promiscuous port uh, untagged to slash 1. And there you go, the communication to the promiscuous port is re-established and it's still not possible possible to communicate between the access ports that are in the isolated VLAN. Okay, now for the second part, which is getting some authentication done on the access ports. So a use case for this is the use of devices that don't have an 802.1x supplicant, like printers. You really want to have some authentication and authorization here, but you don't want somebody to connect to this port and be able to discover the other hosts that are on this VLAN. So what we're going to do here is configure MAC authentication with, uh, with RADIUS. And then as a bonus, I will be configuring VLAN assignment through RADIUS so that the access devices will be assigned to the secondary isolated VLAN. For the, uh, for the configuration of the radio server, I've already configured everything on ClearPass, but I will show you what I did. So let me just first go to the profiles. So I've created a profile. Let me just search it up, uh, which is the Mac auth VLAN assignment. Let me show it to you. Um, so what I'm doing here is in that profile, I am assigning VLAN 120. Okay, I have mapped that profile to a policy, to a Mac auth policy. So you see the rule here. So if my role equals Mac auth users, I'm updating the endpoint and I am applying the Mac auth VLAN assignment. Um, and then finally, I have uh, created a MAC authentication service here. In that MAC authentication service, I am authenticating against the local user repository, also the endpoints repository, repository but also you know, the primary one is the local user repository. And I am enforcing the MAC auth policy. What I've also done, I have created, so in the um, uh, in the policy, you can see that I was mapping, uh, do a role mapping. So I've created um, a Mac auth uh, role, and in that Mac auth role, I have done a role mapping. All right, so authorization source equals local user repository. And in the local user repository, I have created the MAC address entries. So the, these are the MAC authentication entries that are, you know, that the that are identified 
by the uh, by the access devices. Let's go back to the access device configuration, the access switch configuration. First, what we have to do is we have to remove VLAN 120 membership from the access ports because that's going to be done by radius enforcement. Okay, so let's go to VLAN 120 and we do a no untagged 2 slash 2, 2 slash 3. You can see now that the access devices can communicate with each other again because they're not in the isolated VLAN anymore. Communication with the promiscuous port stalls because this port operates in a different VLAN. It operates in VLAN 110. For the authentication part we need to configure the radius server and port security. Let me go through the config of this. First let's start with the radius server on the access switch, so go into configuration mode again, radius server host and that's going to be the clear pass server 10.130.107.19 and I'm going to provide a secret key the other thing I need to set is the dynamic authorization that allows you to change the VLANs dynamically and I need to set the time window to zero for clear pass zero that's the uh, that's the radius part and secondly the authentication setup of the ports so we're doing Mac authentication so first is uh, setting a client limit port access um, and that's authenticator 2 slash 2 and then set a client limit say 3 uh, limit of 3 and do the same for port 3 Um, globally enable the authentication AAA port access authenticator active and enable Mac authentication on the ports slash 2 and 2 slash 3 and you can actually see now that it starts to uh, work straight away the um, so the communication between the access devices is installed again so you can see on the right access switch that I cannot reach the other access switch anymore However, I can, fr so from the left access switch, I'm issuing a ping to the promiscuous device, and that is successful. That's working again. And let's check what's happening in the access tracker on ClearPass. So you can see that there's, uh, there are some authentications taking place here. Uh, let's just let me take one of the switches here. You can see that there's an accept, and uh, the radius response is sending out the VLAN ID 120. And let's check out what is happening on the switch, on the access switch. So let me do a show port access client 2 slash 2 detail. So it's uh, what's the status of that port. You can see that the access port is authenticated and that the untagged VLAN 120 is assigned. So that's all working. And uh, so that means that for both devices, both access devices, they, they, you know, as you can see, they cannot communicate with each other, but the access devices can communicate with the promiscuous port, which is cool stuff. 
So this concludes the configuration of private VLANs with Radius Mac authentication. I hope that you like the video and uh, if you did, please hit the like button. If you have any suggestions or ideas for video, please let us know and keep on the watch for more great videos to come. Bye for now.